Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna discuss about a topic that is pretty much a bigger topic, but I'm trying to fit it all in, at least a part of it, in this video. So we're gonna talk about orchid repotting and moreover, gentle repotting versus conventional repotting. Now, if you've been in the orchid hobby for a while, you certainly heard about this procedure, repotting orchids and why it's good to repot orchids and orchids need to be repotted full stop. And that's true, orchids do need to be repotted regularly due to medium decomposition. And that's the keyword, decomposition. Why? Well, because conventional medium is made out of bark chips, sphagnum moss, coconut husk, all of those things break down. They can break down anywhere in between one year to three years. So that is the good time for you to repot your orchids to avoid issues that I will actually show you in this video. Now, what my major goal was with my inorganic setup, as you can see, I am using clay, clay doesn't break down is to provide a non-degradable medium that doesn't need to be replaced every few years or every one year. One of you lovely viewers, Helle, actually linked me and told me about a certain person who is actually using a type of inorganic medium. His name is Hans Christiansen, and if you do a little bit of research on who this person is, you will find that he has quite the awards for his orchids. I'll link you down below to more information, but pretty much, Mr. Hans is using a type of inorganic material. As I understand it, it's made out of rock wool or different types of rock wool. And I know that's a brand, but I don't know how to call it otherwise. In combination with perlite, maybe something else as well, I never used that medium. I just found out about it and I'm trying to learn more about it. Now, the material itself doesn't matter in the instance of repotting all that much. What matters is it is inorganic. Now, to my surprise, Mr. Hans has a very similar vision about repotting as I do with my setup. Reading about his product, which by the way is called Green Mix, he actually mentions that repotting is not needed until the orchid outgrows her pot. A gentle repot can be performed. I've never been able to properly describe what I meant by the repotting that I mentioned, but this is a perfect word for it. It is a gentle repot. That's what I shall explain to you today. Today we will repot this Telumnia orchid from the clay pot to the plastic pot and you'll see what's different when we compare it to bark chips or other organic mediums. Now to start off, we have a clay pot. Now clay pots are not necessarily the best when it comes to gentle repotting. Why? Because roots tend to attach a lot to it. So whenever we will unpluck an orchid, we might actually damage roots. In a plastic pot, this doesn't happen because plastic is very smooth. It doesn't have pores. It's not abrasive. Pretty much the roots just snap out of it without any type of damage. With clay pots, meh. We're gonna find out how hard it is. I already repotted a few orchids. To my surprise, it's not really that hard. A little bit of water actually helps. So let us hope that we will not have a lot of damage. So first thing I'm gonna do is remove this orchid from her clay pot and then the gentle repotting can begin. So unlike a plastic pot, I cannot squeeze this pot to make the roots just snap from the sides. And this orchid is already a little bit attached. So what I can do is remove the medium as much as possible. And then I'm gonna be left with the orchid and her roots pretty much attached to the pot. And I already see something I don't like. So this root has grown attached to the pot, please. Okay, you see it? that root over there. And at some point it stopped. I do get this quite a lot with the roots that touch the clay pot. I don't get it a lot with roots that are actually inside the medium, particularly the middle ones. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. So I'm gonna go to the sink, I'm gonna saturate this pot with water and then we'll see if it's easier to remove this orchid. Okay, so the pot is now wet and let's see if things are easier. Ooh, I can already see the roots detaching. I didn't even have to pull that much. So as you can see, yay, this was easier than I thought. So we have a whole bunch of roots here. And as you can see, we have some medium attached to the roots. Now let's imagine this is not clay medium. Let's imagine it is bark. And also we can imagine we have a whole lot of bark attached to the roots. In this instance, with a normal repotting, what we would do is actually wet the medium and the roots and then try to remove the medium gently from the roots as much as possible. Now what this does is actually provide the main damage when you repot orchids. The fact that a few orchids manage to outgrow the pot and come out from the drainage holes or the ventilation holes, two, three, four roots, they don't really matter in the overall 
overall root system. But when you start to remove the pieces of the medium from the roots themselves, that's when you create the damage. You remove parts of the velum and some orchids do lose roots because of this. You snap them and of course this only depends on the orchid. Some orchids with thick roots might not have quite a lot of damage. Phalaenopsis usually don't have a lot of damage. But there are orchids with very fine roots, Telumnias are actually one of them, that manage to attach so hard and they have such thin roots and fragile roots that whenever you try to gently remove a piece of medium, you have very high chances to actually damage the root herself as well. And what will happen is the root will die off or you will have a wound which will be an open door for pathogens and so on. So that translates into a setback orchid. Now don't get me wrong, repotting is absolutely necessary and if you don't repot you'll have much bigger issues than this. But what repotting might mean is that your orchid will stale. For about a year probably you will not have those spectacular results that you had until that point. So every few years you will work on making your orchid excellent. When your orchid will perform excellent you need to repot it. You reset all your hard work. That's one of the things that I hated, absolutely hated about bark chips and organic medium. And now you will say, but Danny, what if we don't actually remove as much of the medium as possible and we just let the pieces hang on? Not to worry, I tried that as well and here is what happened. I'll link you down below to the video as well but you can see the footage. I had my Maxillaria tinifolia that I repotted gently in the sense that I didn't remove all the pieces of the medium, I just let them there. This Maxillaria has thin roots, it was a nightmare. So I decided, you know what, I want flowers from this orchid. I will just get rid of the medium that was not attached to the roots and the roots that have medium attached I'll just leave them on, put some fresh medium, everything should be okay, right? Well, in a few months I had the mold fiesta in my pot. That's why we remove as much of the old medium as possible when we're dealing with organic substrates. And that, my friends, it's not a gentle repot. It is invasive, it can damage the orchid, it can set it back, and you will have a very uneven pattern of growth on that orchid. You'll have periods when she's doing great and periods when she needs a little time to adjust. That's pretty much what bugs me. Now when it comes to clay materials and all inorganic materials, the need for removing every piece of medium disappears. Why? Because this medium does not decompose. It can stay like this indefinitely. Therefore, when we repot an orchid from inorganic medium to inorganic medium, there is no need to remove as much of the old medium as possible. We can also reuse whatever medium this orchid has and we can offer new medium as well. Of course, if we find dead roots, we can cut them and if they have pieces of medium attached to them, that's okay. We're gonna get them back afterwards. But the good roots who have medium attached to them shall not be damaged and overall the orchid will have better chances to adapt a lot faster to the change, to the new medium and so on. Pretty much you will not go through the setback. Isn't that the dream? Well, that was one of my visions with the clay setup. That happens to be one of the visions of Mr. Hans Christiansen, which means it might be a good idea. So, this is the gentle repotting that I shall perform from now on with my orchids. Of course, with plastic it will work a lot better, which do not attach all that much to plastic. They just come right off if you do this to the plastic, but you already know everybody uses plastic pots. So now it's time to repot this orchid. I didn't have much algae on the top, so I don't really have anything to change. But of course, this is a little bit of a bigger pot. I will use new medium as well. So I will fill this pot with medium and then I'll come back for the top layer. And my orchid is repotted. Now the top layer is made out of rock pebbles. I tested them, they're not marble, they don't raise the pH, they don't really leach out anything. So I started using the top layer of pebbles because of the clay material which absorbs moisture and has the possibility to damage the roots. But as it turns out from the experiment that I am performing, putting this top layer has other benefits that makes life with plastic and clay a lot easier. So one of them is preventing the formation of algae because this is not porous, doesn't retain water, pretty much it will stay dry and the quantity of water that will be on top will not be enough and constant enough actually to promote algae. So that's one thing. Second thing, it actually prevents layering with the clay. In one of my videos I told you that I hate setups with clay medium and plastic pots because of the uneven layering, the drying layering. The top will be very dry, the bottom will be very wet. Even if ceramics is very absorbent, at some point it will still layer and that bugs me quite a lot. But what do you know, keeping this layer on top means water will not necessarily evaporate from the top anymore, it will evaporate from the sides and the bottom. 
What does that mean? Minimal layering. And in the York is that I already have in this setup, I'm observing that, which means I fixed the main issue. So there we go. There's another issue to fix in this setup, but we'll get to that one. We'll make a separate video. So there you go. This has been the idea of the gentle repotting that I wanted to talk to you about. I will mention it quite a lot in my videos and pretty much in my future videos as well, because when the Swarkid outgrows her pot, which will be in a lot of years, <laughs> this is a Tulumia, what will happen next is I will just remove the orchid from the plastic pot, which is not a hard job. Get a bigger pot, put it in, put medium around it and around the root system that is already attached to the current medium and call it a day. And the root system will be for the main part intact. And presumably my new setup will work, it shall be pretty much perfect for me. So alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember down below in the description, you have links to the green mix, some discussions on forums actually, because I did my research on the green mix and as for the future, I do intend to use it. See what's what, when it comes to inorganic, I'm open to ideas and who knows, maybe there are better setups or something will work better for me or for particular orchids. So there we go, that's what we shall do in the future. We're remaining with inorganic, but we're just making it a lot better. Thank you for watching. If you if you've enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for daily orchid and plants videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video and with that said i'll see you guys tomorrow bye